AWP research helps me focus on the future rather than the past because I've had uh, CBT for example I don't like to dwell on the past where things have gone wrong I want to um, be focused on the future and research by its nature is focused on the future and so it helps with my uh, aims for the future for actually developing my career uh, my also my social skills so that I can be uh, uh, I have reactive depression if I have a better life then the depression reacts less so my mental health will improve and already is improving a, a very wise older friend of mine who's a retired social worker sent me an email a year or so ago and said you are not the person you were you are different now you are stronger um, yeah, I feel largely that I've been given back to myself and I feel partly that it's the result of um, surviving adversity. I think a lot of people who go into this work, you know, have been through stuff that's knocked their life for six and uh, they're trying to find a way forward. They're also trying to find a way to kind of uh, make sense of what's happened to them and um, recover something to give back to others, to help others, and uh, all those things I have experienced, and that in itself is really empowering. I think um, it, you know, say it confirmed some of my knowledge. It helped me to become more aware, and I really felt privileged to actually be involved. Um, as though maybe you know, I, well, I learned from it, and I also felt maybe some of my experience in that maybe helped. And when I was talking to the carers in particular, in their own homes, which is quite a privileged place to be, they, I was able to listen to what they were saying and share my experiences with them, which was really, I got a lot from that. I think adversity has made me stronger. And if I can share some of these um, ideas and feelings that I've got, and my passion that carers will have a voice, that's what I can do really and I've managed to do that in the nurses in training have now got to include um, carers in, in their paperwork so they've got to go and find out what the carers think what could be more important it's raised my confidence and it's raised my ability to actually feel that I can actually tell people what it's like for carers because I've spent most of my life in a caring role with no support whatsoever and actually now that is beginning to change. I provide a support group specifically for carers of people with mental health issues to actually give some support because I feel it's severely lacking and carers are a very valuable commodity. You know, at the end of the day, if you don't have input from a carer or a patient doesn't have a carer, that costs the NHS and the mental health services an absolute fortune to provide that support. So we are a very valuable commodity. It kind of makes me feel part of, part of something, you know. Um, pretty confident actually, because at first obviously it's quite nerve-wracking, you know, meeting new people, um, asking them questions. Yeah, it gives you that sort of confidence and that sort of, um, sort of self-worth. Yeah. It helps me know that I've had obstacles that I've overcome, which I've engaged in certain services and certain people that I've come across, um, overcome certain things within myself and other people have had good fonts of knowledge for me to say to me and it's about me having to take that and apply that and put it into my life and then knowing that there's people with all sorts of issues, like having the same sort of issues on a lower level maybe, but we can implement um, interventions into the system which help them better sustain and get stability within their life and continuity. So they're able to have more of a productive lifestyle as I've created a lifestyle for myself within all their relationships and so forth. Yeah, for me it was a great chance to um, kind of self-reflect on my condition, what I've been diagnosed with. Um, it's sort of, uh, it's also to get out, out the message out there that um, 
of all, to, to all people who suffer from a similar uh, condition that um, yeah that they can be managed and it can be understood the the actual um, condition of schizophrenia well there's very little inspiration because I just saw an A3 sheet of paper on the on the door of the local mental health unit and I thought yeah that could be my I could help out there so that's where the inspiration comes this is a free sheet paper basically well I believe I made some gains by learning about myself and learning how I could help others maybe to an extent no it wasn't what I thought because I never had much idea about what was going to go on so it's all new to me and a surprise, but it went really well. I thought um, the way it was developed and delivered by the uh, doctor was all good stuff, and it helped. I hope I have helped other people. Well, I would encourage people to take part in research. I think whether you're taking part as a participant or as somebody who's involved with academics trying to make studies work well, what we, we don't have to have an understanding of the science or the um, clinical issues necessarily, but what we bring that researchers don't have is the personal experience and that's, what's an impo that's the important additional contribution to understand when you're planning a study what it will mean for people to take part and we can, we can understand, you know, I can put myself still in the position of somebody who might be being asked questions in a research project and think how that would feel to me. So I can think about the research process from a different perspective and share my, you know, my personal views about that. Obviously people will have different views, but nonetheless we can bring a, a different patient service user perspective to, um, you know, to clinical academic studies of all, of all kinds. Number one, it's a far better understanding of the uh, problem itself. It's being taken through all the elements and the effects has. And some of the research is involved being with other people. And by being with other people, you learn from them as well. So you're all in the same boat together. Some are at the front and some are at the back, if you like. You're learning all the time, and that's what it's about. One of my favourite words is choice. You have a choice in how you get involved, or whether you go or not. And we found it really successful, haven't we? We have. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. yes very much so. You've benefited a lot. Well, I, I think we both have. Well, we have both had. We get a bit yes. of togetherness out of it, don't we? <laughs> Um, well, having a mental illness means that you have to go through quite a lot of difficult periods in your life and um, it's going to be quite upsetting and quite difficult to deal with. So when you get to a place where you're um, reasonably stable, um, it's nice to be able to use those experiences and to um, in a, into a positive way. So um, just collecting up all this sort of knowledge from people who've had these experiences means that people in the future will be able to deal with the illnesses a bit easier than what we've had to deal with. Her. And being part of that makes you feel good. Well, I, I think from my point of view, it's, it's first of all knowing that something's being done and, and giving me confidence that hopefully one day um, something will be found to help my wife uh, with a, me uh, a memory problem um, and hopefully if something is found to stop the memory problem or um, improve it that uh, perhaps we will be first in the queue to um, have the medication or for my wife to have the medication uh, perhaps before it's licensed. The sort of time frame I've got at the moment and also that time frame has varied from me having two years before I'll need care to maybe 10, if I'm lucky, 15 years before I need care. 
If it's two years, I'm going to be 57. If it's 10 years, I'm going to be 65. Hopefully, I should have many more years beyond 65. So, being involved in research, anything that can do to help me have a good quality of life beyond the immediate future at the moment. And um, just so my husband doesn't have to go through what he's going to have to go through in a few years' time, I would do anything to avoid putting him through that um, horrible disease. And I think it's worse for the carer than it possibly is for the person. I don't really know. but um, So, yeah, I would grab any opportunity I could to get involved with research and to help the researchers. I truly believe that as a filmmaker, but also someone who has had um, issues with my own mental health in the past, that what it does is just simple. It, it gives me um, it gives me that experience. So when I'm with someone, you know, whether it's someone who is, is has men, uh, problems with their own mental health, or someone who's interested in participating in research, you know that the, there is a there is an identification which takes place, which takes place and. Um, so when I when I kind of merge that with my my skills as a filmmaker, but also someone who in the past had problems with their own mental health, th there seems to be an understanding. There's an understanding of what's going on, and and for me as someone who interviews, then it's as if doors open within a person. They because they know the interviewee knows that this guy knows what I'm talking about because he's been there. So I'll just open up to him, and 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 over the past year working with. R&D, that tends to be the case. Sometimes as a clinician I can feel that research is uh, a bit of an imposition or can get in the way. As a researcher I'm always focused on what the research question is and trying to get the answer. But it's really important, I'm really pleased to hear from people about their first-hand experiences of doing research. And it's always very similar. It's that they enjoy taking part, that they find out about new things, new treatments, new information about their condition, that they feel empowered by it. It's a choice, they don't have to do it, so they uh, decide to take part and that feels good. They often want to contribute um, to other people's future well-being and for them it can give them a sense of hope that something new might be discovered to help their problems. It's a wonderful opportunity and the people I've been working with I've got the greatest admiration for. They, they're only ordinary people but they have a passion and that's what their research is all about. I would say go for it um, because it's really interesting so, and, you, and, you, and it is very satisfying but also you get supported and I think that's really important. I say give it your best shot, give it your best shot and go for it. Nothing could be, you can't be hurt by it um, and you can gain by it, definitely gain by it, that's what I'd say. It is, it is very, very exciting, it's, it's very dynamic it's forward thinking and it shows and, and that's why I really I get a lot from working with this with this team and, um, and it's, it's absolutely fascinating as well because you know what this team is doing is that this team is, is, is pushing forward in research to actually find the answers and and, um, and, and probably for me I, I, I get a lot from that myself because as an interviewer I'm looking for answers so the team is dynamic the team is young the team is um, it's probably one of the best that, that, I've, that I've worked with within, um, within AWP. And I would recommend anyone, if they're given the opportunity to get involved in research, to, um, to go for it.